Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, it is so amazing, the work of God in our lives. Amen. Um, as we're here this morning, I'm going to ask if you would kindly turn with me in your Bibles. This morning, we'll be looking at the book of Matthew again, uh, where we'll be in chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, uh, we'll read about uh, two verses to start, but we will be going through Matthew 15, 21 to 28. That's Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Um, again, if you're there with me, it reads as follows. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman came out from the region and began crying out, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is, is listen to this word. Purely demon-possessed. That is very interesting. That this woman comes to Jesus from Canaan crying out. Let us pray as we go before the Lord. Our Father God, we come before you this morning crying out to you, O God. Just as this woman did, we too cry out. We cry out for your deliverance. We cry out for your salvation. We cry out for your help. Father, we cry out be to you because you are the only one who can hear prayers and answer them. And so we come before you this morning, O oh God, crying out just, just in the same manner that Sarah and Phoenician woman cr cried out to our Savior, knowing that he is the only one who can deliver. So, Father, whatever we may be going through this day, we're asking for deliverance. We're asking for deliverance from unemployment, for deliverance from this pestilence that's plaguing the land called the corona. Uh, a virus, Father, we uh, ask for deliverance from abuse, uh, from addictions. We ask this day, O oh God, that you would ultimately deliver us from the penalty of sin and death. And Father, for everything that you do in and through us, we be careful to magnify your name. I pray as we go through your word that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to discern, minds to believe and to do the very thing that you're calling us to do. Grant us your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see here Jesus, uh, he had just finished speaking to the disciples and telling them about their heart condition um, up in verse, uh, from verse 15 to verse 20. He was saying that it is not what a man uh, puts in him that makes him defile, it's what comes out of a man that makes him defile. And all of a sudden Jesus uh, went off now and says he's going to this region of Tyre and Sidon and reads as follows. It says, and Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. 
and behold, a Canaanite woman came out of that region and began to cry out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. So she says, a daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. Now, what's interesting about this thing, we have a woman from Canaan. Now, the last time you probably heard of Canaan is in the Old Testament where God told Israel to go into the land of Canaan and possess it to, to take it over. Um, and now we have this Canaanite woman, right? So this Canaanite woman is coming to Jesus. She's not a believer. She's not a Jew. She's a Canaanite. She does not know Christ um, as her Savior, and she's not serving God, um, not anywhere seen in this context, uh, because Christ is going to make that very known that she's not a believer in God. So this non-believer comes to Jesus, and she says, Master, Lord, Son of David. Now she goes and she calls Christ by his messianic name, the Son of David. That's a messianic name for Jesus Christ. And so she's acknowledging that Jesus is Messiah. This unbeliever now, this woman who is not a Jew, she, she's not a Jew, but she believes that this man could do something for her. So let me tell you about this man, because this man, Jesus, it shows that anyone can come at any time and cry out to Jesus for help. Notice what she does. She comes to him and she cries out, Lord. Now that term, Lord, means master, and that's a term of a subjection to say, I'm placing myself under you. You are my master. She's calling him Lord. And she says, Lord. And then she calls him Messiah, son of David. Now, mind you, this is not a believer. And this goes to show if anyone comes to Jesus, it doesn't matter where you come from. You could be Hindu, Muslim. You could follow Confucius. It doesn't make a difference. You can be a Scientologist. When you call out to Jesus and say, Master, Lord, he always hears when you cry out to him. And that is what is so beautiful about this, that this woman who doesn't know God, she's calling Christ Lord, Messiah. She's calling him Master. How it would be if we would all seek to call Christ Lord and Master. And let's see what happens here. It says um, in verse, she says a daughter is um, cruelly possessed. And so apparently that this God who she doesn't serve can do something for her. She thinks that this guy who she heard about called Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ the Messiah, she's perceiving now that he can do something for her because apparently she probably went everywhere else and nothing could be done. And now she's coming to someone who she feels can do something. So where did that come from? Like, how does she think Christ can deliver someone from an evil spirit? It must be something about his reputation that made her feel as if though he can do something. Folks, I'm telling you, people around you need to know about the reputation of Jesus Christ. Are you representing him well? Because if you are representing him well, then people will come to you in their time of trouble as Christ's representative of salt, as light. They would come to you seeking help. Why? Because you are displaying the same characteristics of Jesus because that's what it means to be a Jesus follower. It's a good term to say that when people are in desperate need, they would turn to you. They would turn to those who represent Christ. They would turn to Christ for help. This woman, She's a pagan and she's turning to Jesus and she's calling him Lord, Master, um, a Messiah, Son of David. Now something is happening in her life because she now sees that the only way she can be delivered is through the hands of God. The only way her daughter can be delivered is through the hands of God. Now for some reason she's saying that Christ can deliver her daughter from a demon. Now this is interesting. So she must think that Christ has some sort of supernatural power to do something. I'm saying this because we need to realize if a pagan woman can come to Jesus Christ believing that he has supernatural power, how much more his people would trust in him because of his supernatural power. <laughs> it, it reads as follows in verse 23. Watch what he says. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came to him and kept asking him, saying, send her away, for she is shouting out after us. I want you to know this. Uh, Jesus didn't say anything, but Jesus' silence isn't a judgment. It was, watch this, an assessment. I will say that again. Jesus' silence is not a judgment, but it's an assessment. 
So Jesus was not judging the woman, even though the thing to send her away. What was he doing? He was assessing this woman to see where her heart truly was. So in the midst of your shouting out and crying out to Jesus, if you don't see your answer immediately, you must know and you must trust in the fact that Jesus has something greater in store. And so he's waiting to see what this woman is going to do. So he's assessing her heart's condition. And God does that to us. He assesses our heart condition to see if we're on the right wavelength with him, to see if we're traveling down the same road, to see if we are all in sync. And God is right now in this situation. Jesus, hearing the woman, does not even answer her. He just turns away. His disciples come to him and say, Lord, don't you hear her? She's following us. She's shouting after us. You need to do something, either help her or send her away. And Jesus, in the midst of it all, he is just chilling. Now, we may think if we call out to Jesus and he don't answer, He's not near. He could just be assessing the situation to let you know in the appropriate time his perfect answer and his perfect response. And we're going to see that right now. Watch what takes place now in verse 24. It says, but he answered now after the apostle says, yo, I'm, I'm Jesus. Why is it that you're not answering this woman? She keeps shouting behind us. Jesus replied to them now. Notice he didn't answer the woman. He's answering his disciples. The woman is still shouting out after him, but he's not answering her. Sometimes we may be shouting out after God and it looks like he's ignoring us, but he really isn't. He's just assessing the situation. So his disciples ask him, why isn't he responding? And Jesus now responds to his disciples, not to the woman. He responds to his disciples in verse 24 and says, but he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I was sent only to the Lord sheep of God. Wait a minute. This is not an answer to the woman's question. She asks Jesus to help her. Jesus answers his disciples and says, I was only sent to the Lord sheep of Israel. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not politically correct. And that's one thing we need to know about Christ right now is he is not politically correct. Oh, mind you, by the way, the scribes and the Pharisees, that was the Jewish government at the time. And Jesus never bowed down to them, nor said the politically correct thing. He called them all out. Both parties he called out, the scribes and the Pharisees. <laughs> See that both parties, Democrats and Republicans. He called them all out. He says, wait a minute, you, got, you guys are a bunch of whitewashed tombs. And speaking to the politically correct people, Jesus saying something that is very, very difficult. I came only to the lost sheep of Israel. Why? Because he is the good shepherd and the shepherd came to take care of his sheep. And he's telling this woman, basically, he's telling his disciples with the woman hearing him now, the woman is hearing him and the woman is hearing him say, well, I didn't come to help her. I came for you. Wait a minute. Aren't you the master? Aren't you the Messiah? Listen to what Jesus is saying. That is not a good thing for someone to hear. That is not a nice thing for someone to hear. That Jesus is telling them, wait a minute, I didn't come for you. I came for the lost sheep of Israel. But something is going to happen right now. Because in Jesus' response, in him not saying the politically correct thing, in him saying the politically incorrect thing, this woman didn't even care. Mind you. Even though she got a stern rebuke, because that is what it is, even though she basically gets insulted because, you know, he's making her feel less than, yeah, I didn't come here for you, she still stays with him and still comes behind him. See, that's the thing. Something has happened in this culture that if we say truth, people reject truth because they don't feel, it doesn't feel good to them. So when you say the politically incorrect thing and you hurt someone's feelings all of a sudden now they come up against you because well you're hurting my feelings well that's your truth that's not my truth Jesus said a truth to this woman that he came to the lost sheep of Israel but that didn't deter her she said yes this may be true now, let's see what happens here in verse 25 but she came and began to bow down before him saying Lord help me <laughs> this is awesome Jesus tells the woman I came to the lost sheep of Israel the woman reply is 
to fall down on her knees, proskuneo, before God. The term proskuneo is the term that's there for she fell down. It's the term that we use called worship. Worship is the word proskuneo. And this woman, it said, and the woman came down and proskuneo before him and said, Lord, listen, Jesus gave the woman a negative answer, a politically incorrect answer. He said, I came to the lost sheep of Israel and you're not one of them. The woman then steps up and says, wait a minute, Lord. And she falls down and starts to worship Jesus Christ. See, there is something about when we don't get the answer we want from God, about running before his throne and falling down on our faces. And in spite of it all, we get in on our face and saying, Lord, but you are the only Jesus saw her persistence. Jesus saw her getting down on her knees and worshiping him in spite of his answer to her. But guess what? <laughs> he still is not going to say the politically correct thing because that's what he does. He's not politically correct. He's always politically incorrect. Why? Because he's the truth and the politically correct people tends to follow a lie. And Jesus is stepping in and he says, wait a minute. Now, this woman is bowing down and she's on the ground. I want you to hear me. This woman is now prostrate, face down on the ground before him, begging, please help me, Lord, please. And she's crying out to him. Notice what she says. But she came and she began to bow down before him, fell down on her face, worshiping him and said, Lord, help me. She said, Master, help me. So she's acknowledging, wait a minute, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you because you deserve my worship. And I'm going to bow down to you right now and worship because you deserve it. And then she says, you are my Lord. So I'm going to bow down and worship you because you are my master. She's now calling a Canaanite woman, a woman who don't know Jesus, sees Jesus, now falls on her face. Even though she gets a bad answer, she falls down on her face, starts to worship, and now calling him master. Believers, imagine this, believers. If we would fall down on our face when we're not hearing the appropriate thing that we want to hear, when in the midst of our circumstances, it feels as if though God is not hearing us, in the midst of your circumstances, feel like he's not listening because you've been crying out, Lord, please help me, deliver me, Lord, help me, and you're getting no response. But you believe that the Lord isn't hearing you, and you believe that he's not listening, but he is right there. If you be persistent, he said that if someone comes and keep knocking on the neighbor door in the night, knocking, 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 knocking. After a while, that person will get tired of them knocking and say, how can I help you? I'm telling you, when you stay persistent, all you're doing, the Jesus is calling out on Jesus eventually, is, how can I help you? That's what this woman is doing right now. Notice what she's doing. Right now, Christ basically rejected her, said, I came to the lost sheep of Israel. And look at what she did. She fell down at his feet and worship. If we would fall down at the feet of God and worship him. In the midst of our hurt, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our devastation, worship is what we should be doing. Worship is what we should be doing. Um, you know, there is two times to praise God. I heard this when I was younger, that there's two times to praise God when you feel like it and when you don't. Those are the only two times and right now, this woman is coming before God, and she's like praising God. And right now, some of you need to get down on your face and just praise God. Just worship God right where you are. Don't even think about your situation or your circumstance. Think about the God who controls all things and how he can deliver you out of your situation and your circumstance and get down on your face right now and give him worship because that's what this woman did. Now watch his response after she falls down, after she starts worshiping. Watch what happens in verse 26. And he answered her and said, it is, is it not good to take the children's bread and throw it to dogs. What? <laughs> this woman came to him humble, calling him Lord and Master. He said, well, I came to the lost sheep of Israel and ignored the woman and only answered the disciples. The woman came back and lay down at his feet and started worshiping him and calling him Lord and Master. And his response, Jesus' response, listen very carefully, if this is not politically incorrect, I don't know what is. Listen very carefully to his answer. He says, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to dogs. 
wait a minute, did Jesus just call this woman a dog? Wait a minute, did Jesus in everyone's hearing call this woman a dog? Wait a minute, is this Jesus the peace-loving, walking on water, Mary's baby Jesus, who just called this woman a dog? Well, that's what he said, because he basically said, I came to the lost sheep of Israel, and I can't cast the bread from children to dogs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Anyone hearing someone say that to them coming for help would leave. But this woman who is worshiping Jesus, <laughs> she know he has the answer. She know he is, he is the only way out of her situation. She know that he has something that she needs. So she is persistent. It doesn't even matter what he says to her. She doesn't care about any of that. She is still there being persistent saying, listen, I hear what you are saying, but I ain't tuning into that. You have something that I need. You have some deliverance and I need you to heal my daughter. I need you to do this thing. So she stays persistent. In the midst of an insult, <laughs> oh my goodness, saints, imagine if we would do that. If we read some word in the scripture that we don't like, we try to change it because it doesn't meet our comfort. Like the fact that Christ um, um, and the word of God, it speaks out about the liar and the immoral person and the one who steals and the one who commits adultery and, and homosexuality and fornication and all these things. But yet still, we rather justify our sin when Christ calls it out. Christ calls this woman a dog and she doesn't even care. She falls down, worship him. And watch what he says. Uh, watch what she does after he calls her a dog. Watch this. In verse 27 says, but she said, yes, Lord. But even the dogs feed of the crumbs which falls from the table of the master. <laughs> Wait a minute. This woman says, yes, I may not be from Israel. Yes, I may not be one of your sheep, but you still my master because I, I am before you right now and I know the dogs will eat that would fall off the table. So give me your crumbs. Give me anything that falls. I don't need your bread. I can just take the crumbs from the bread. I don't need to sit at your table. I just want to be at your feet under the table. I don't need to be one of your sheep. I can just, I, I can just be around the sheep. She said, listen, I don't care what you say. Just give me what you got because whatever you got is good enough. Sometimes we need to know and trust that Whatever Christ has is good enough. Is it good enough for you? Because he might not be giving you the answer you want, but the answer he's giving is the answer that you need in this situation. And that woman is saying right now, listen, it doesn't matter what you say. I want something from you and I'm not leaving until I get it. So she's at his feet bowing down even though she's being insulted. She's still there worshiping him. And she said, but master, and notice she never stops calling him master. But master, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Notice her pride is gone. She has no pride in this instance. Now she's saying, listen, you can call me whatever you want to call me. You have the right to call me that. Why? You're my master. You could do whatever you want to do. Why? Because you're my master. And she sees him as Lord. She sees him as master. She sees him as Messiah. She sees him as the son of David. So she's acknowledging things that even those disciples who are with him right now couldn't understand. Now what Jesus replied to this. Jesus replied to this woman who he said is not from the lost sheep of Israel, who he calls a dog. He now replies to her. Now watch what he says in verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, your faith is great. Be it done for you as you wish, and her daughter was healed at once. Saints, I just want to say this to you today. It doesn't matter what you're going through. When you run to Jesus and when you bow down before him, when you start to worship him in the midst of your anxiety, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulation, in the midst of your great distress, that's where Jesus is. And when you cry out and you don't get the answer that you want, you don't get the healing that you want, you don't get the deliverance that you want, you don't get the miracle that you want, I'm telling you, stay persistent. Because when you stay persistent, Jesus is right there assessing your situation looking to see what you are going to do because your faith increased more through tribulation he's not going to automatically pull you out because when you go through it he's going to go through it with you and when you come out on the next side your faith would have increased this woman started off standing up before Jesus in the midst of the conversation 
She's now on her knees before Jesus. She's still in the conversation on her face now before Jesus. She's being insulted and she's looking up from the floor now crying out. Sometimes we need to stop standing before God and bow low before him and humble ourselves before God. Sometimes we need to stop commanding God and just be persistent at asking God. Because some people are so arrogant, they believe they can command God to do things and that he's like a genie. He's going to just do whatever you rub him to do. But I'm telling you this, when you stay persistent in your worship, when you fall down on your face, when you get before the Lord and start to worship him, he's going to bring a breakthrough in your life. He's saying right now, what great faith this woman have. She only didn't have faith he said what great faith this woman have now he's saying that in the midst of his disciples in the midst of the believers who wasn't demonstrating great faith in the midst of Israel who wasn't demonstrating great faith in the midst of the scribes and the Pharisees who weren't demonstrating great faith in the midst of the Sanhedrin who wasn't demonstrating great faith in the midst of all the priests who are not demonstrating great faith he now is saying that this pagan Canaanite woman has demonstrated great faith would you this day demonstrate great faith in Jesus Christ, simply by trusting him, simply by casting all your cares upon him, allow him to be your deliverer this day. That's what he desires. He desires to deliver us, but we must demonstrate faith, great faith. When we trust in him, even though things may seem like they're not turning around, eventually he will work everything out. That's my, prayer to you. That's my prayer for you today. That's my word this day, that you would place your faith and trust in Christ, just like the Seraphonician woman, that you would be consistent. But there may be someone today, you may be listening to me for the first time, or you may be listening to a message about Christ for the first time. Let me tell you about this man. This man who lived like 2,000 years ago, he came and he gave his life that whoever, now this man, He's the God man. He's also called the son of man, the son of God. And he came and his only desire is that everyone would place their faith and trust in him and come to believe in him as Messiah. When they do this, he says now they're transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his light. If you believe that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, this man who came and he died for our sins. If you believe that he came and died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose on the third day, the scripture says you are saved. If you believe that in your heart and confess that with your mouth that Jesus Christ was was died and was buried and rose from the grave, the scripture says you shall be saved. So I want to pray with you right now. Not a prayer of salvation, but a prayer that the Lord has moved your heart to trust in Christ. And if you have um, any questions, you can please uh, contact us at ndcbf.org um, uh, request. We have our prayer request line and, and you can call and you can talk to someone. But please, right now I'm going to pray. And I pray that the Lord has moved on your heart and touched you in such a way that you would come to the saving knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God, we glorify you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you are doing, oh God. I pray for everyone right now, everyone who have placed their faith and trust in you. May you help us to increase all the more by the power of your spirit. Father, for those who um, have just come to the saving knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ, even for those who may be struggling right now in their faith walk, I pray that by the power of your spirit that you would draw them into your presence, that you would give them a clear understanding of who you are that you may open their eyes, O oh God, by the power of your spirit, that they may see the works of Jesus Christ and so trust and believe in him for eternal salvation. And Father, when you do this, our lips and their lips, we will all give you glory and praise. Thank you for coming not only to the lost sheep of Israel, but thank you for sending your son to save the world. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.